It's not moving. What the hell? Who are you? Um. Hello? Leah? Is that you? That's Officer Piero, and you don't get to ask questions. You can't see it, but there's a Bushnell 22 millimeter rifle aimed right at your head. Step into the middle of the room now. Good. Now turn around. Face the shelf. Now I repeat, who are you? I'm the bestower. I don't know if I want to be saying that. Hmm. I'm Rosangela Blackwell. I'm here to help you. Help me? Lady, you have no idea what I'm up against. What kind of help do you think you can offer? I'm Rosangela Blackwell. I'm the bestower. The bestower? You're the bestower? You? As far as I know. Thank God. You have no idea. No idea what it's been like. Hiding in this little panic room. Waiting. Not knowing. Not knowing what? What exactly is going on? Wait. You mean... George didn't tell you? No, he... He died before he could tell me anything. Died? George is dead? Yes. I'm sorry. Did you... Save him? His ghost? Spirit? Or whatever? No. Leah? Sorry. I... We were close. Towards the end. He was a good person. A bit lost, maybe, but... We all were. He... Didn't deserve that. Hell, none of us do. Leah, I need you to tell me what happened. Of course. George didn't tell you. He couldn't have told you. He won't be telling anybody anything ever again. Leah, please. Yes, I know. It's just hard to say. I mean, who could I tell? Who would believe me? Emil? Corey? Sam? God, they must be worried sick. There was no time to say goodbye, but at least we're safe in here. Wait. We? Who's we? Sorry, did you say we? Is someone else in there with you? Yes, my little Kendra. Mm, what? I didn't want her to get mixed up in all this, but I'm going to save her too if I can. What? what uh... She's dead. Where are you? Behind the wall, in a little room. The room has been specially sealed. Nothing physical or spiritual can harm us in here. We have enough supplies to last us a few more months, but we probably won't need it now that you're here. Leah, Kendra is... Kendra is dead. I'm sorry. I know that. Of course I know that. But sometimes I can pretend she's just sleeping. She's still. So still. But her spirit is still with me. I can't see her, but I can feel her, sense her. It helps. Leah, are you sure Kendra's spirit is in there? Of course. She has to be. I had to bring her here with me. I had to keep her spirit safe. Safe from whatever happened to George. To the others. In here with me, she's safe. She is safe, isn't she? Given what I saw happen to George's spirit, I'm gonna say no. I can't say if she's safe or not, but she's not in there with you. What? How? How can you know that? I... Well, you know who I am. What I can do. I saw her. Kendra. Her ghost, I mean. She's not in there with you. I'm sorry. You saw her. That means they wouldn't have done that. They wouldn't dare, would they? Hold my daughter's soul for ransom? That's sick! Her soul is fine. For the moment. She's upstairs in her room. Oh, thank God. Listen to me. My daughter is dead, and I'm thanking God. I can't do this much longer. You must think I'm horrible. You'll help her, won't you? That's what you do, right? Yes, that's what I do. I really need you to tell me what happened. I can't help you if you don't tell me. Help Kendra first. I'm sorry, but she has top priority. I feel bad for George and the others, but this is Kendra. Damn everyone else. Help her, then I'll tell you everything you need to know. Fair enough. Now I need to ask her about breakfast. <laughs> a little bit of a strange question. 
But trust me, it has a purpose. Can you give me anything else to go on? I told you. Help her, and I'll tell you everything you need to know. What does Kendra like for breakfast? Breakfast? What does that have to do with anything? I don't know. She keeps asking about breakfast. Oh, the password. Password? If I was busy on a case, I'd ask a colleague to escort Kendra home. She didn't know everyone I worked with, so I taught her to ask them, what did I have for breakfast? And if they replied, prunes in a Danish, she would know they could be trusted. It was... it was supposed to keep her safe. Clever. We can try to bring Kendra's ghost down here. You can talk to her if you want. That might help her. God, no. You have to get her spirit away from this house, away from me, as soon as possible. I can't put her at risk. She might be dead, but I can't risk that. Anything but that. Okay, okay. I'm going to leave now, Leah. I'll be back when... Well, I'll be back. Just one question before you go. How is she? Does she know that she's... You know. No, but she will. That's part of how it works. They come to terms with it, and then they leave. I see. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you have to do this. This whole thing just spiraled out of control. Yeah, it always does. You okay? Sure. J just give me a second. I thought the basement smelled a little funny, but I never thought... Yeah. Take all the time you need. God, that's why it smells... strange. Because the body? I don't even want to think about that. Okay, so she wants me to take her away. Joey, get over here. You bellowed? Hey, Kendra? Sorry to bother you again, but I have something I want to ask you. Well, okay. Listen, I really- Um. Okay. So either to your dad or to your mom. She said she wanted her to go somewhere else, so I'm just gonna say to your dad's place? Look, you're- What's your I believe the answer is prunes and a Danish. You're really going to take me to see Dad? You betcha. Okay, let's go. Not sure how this is going to go down, though. The house is so quiet. Mom must be asleep. It's snowing! Should I go back in and get a jacket? Are you cold? Funny. I'm not cold at all. Then you should be fine. Hey, Joey? Yeah? How come she leaves footprints, but you and me don't? Oh, well, uh, that's easy. Just between you and me? She's much heavier than she looks. <laughs> I can hear you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Thanks for taking me. I've got my own key. I can get in on my own. Sure, you, uh, you'll be safe now. Emil lives up on the fifth floor. That's way out of range. Wonder if he's still asleep. No response. He's asleep. Yeah, he's had a rough time of it. Does he know? Know what? Does he know that I'm, you know? No, he doesn't. Not yet. Good. Do you remember what happened? How you... How it happened? Not really. 
I remember being with my mom. It was dark and cold, but she was telling me everything would be all right, that I would be safe. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Why? It's not your fault. Doesn't matter. This kind of thing shouldn't happen. Lots of things happen that shouldn't. It's just... stuff. Yeah, stuff. So, what now? <sighs> just... just come with me. Just hang tight, kid. This'll all be over soon. Well, she's come to terms with it. Alright. Kendra, I'm gonna have to ask you to trust us, okay? You don't have to ask. I already do. Fair enough. Come over here. Just take a hold of this. Okay. The music, it's amazing. Music? It's everywhere. Can't you hear it? It's like every instrument ever made is a part of it. Do you think... Do you think they need a piano player? I don't see why they wouldn't. I'm gonna need a practice. But somehow, I think I'll have plenty of time. I guess you can't come with me? I'm sorry. This is a trip you have to take alone. Tell them I'll miss them. Okay? Of course. Ugh. Still standing, at least. Yeah, bright side. She was so... easygoing. Something about kids, I guess. Their minds are more adaptable, flexible to new ideas, even death. Do you really believe that? Do we have any other choice? Come on, we're not done yet. She did it. She did accept it really easily. I guess it makes sense. Kids are more. They are more adaptable. They really are. They haven't had the expectations put into place yet, necessarily. On how everything's supposed to work and supposed to be. So sad. How did it happen? I need to know how this happened. I wonder if she was working on a case and got caught up in something. She said it spiraled out of control. Joey, where are you? Uh huh. Leah, are you there? Oh, it's you, Bestower. Kendra is safe, Leah. You mean she's... She's moved on. She said goodbye to her father, and she said... She said she'll miss you. How could something that was so right go so horribly wrong? I went to a few meetings, and then I knew I had to join the police academy. It was like a lightning bolt. What kind of meeting? We were all so lost, so hungry for direction and not knowing where to go. All of us searching for that elusive something, that revelation that would fix our lives. The meetings at Grace somehow gave them to us. Gave them to you? Yes. No matter how confused we were, we all found our way. But this, all this was the price. Leah, I need you to focus and tell me what happened. I loved being a cop. I loved being a mother. I did good, didn't I? I thought I did. And you, you do good. That's what I heard. You always help, right? I help the dead. That's what I'm counting on. What? No! Jesus! <sighs> did, did it work? Why, Leah? Why do this? I'm sorry, but it's the only way. My only escape is through you. I know what you did for Kendra. Now do the same for me, please. Please, before they come for me. What the hell is going on? 
It's the only escape from what? Okay, let's do it. Okay, Leah, here's how it works. That's Officer Piero to you, and I know how it works. Great, that saves time. Red here is gonna take you somewhere safe, and when she does, you're gonna have a chat, okay? Fine, fine. Let's just do this quick. You hear me? Don't let this one just fly off into the light. Don't worry. All right, then. It's so quiet here. That little room was quiet, but not like this. It's like I'm hearing everything and nothing at the same time. Can you hear it? No, but Kendra said something similar. Is she out there somewhere? Yes. But Leah, before you go, I need you to tell me how you got this way. What led you to this? We called it the Grace Group because we met at Grace Church. We met once a week. We would talk. It was nice. So it was kind of a self-help group? Kind of. Kind of? What did you talk about? Funny, I don't remember. All I know is that it worked. For all of us. It was like magic. We all learned what we were meant to be. I joined the police academy and never looked back. George discovered a love of art, made a killing as a dealer. George, he won't be out there, will he? He's gone. He risked himself and then he... Ugh! What was that? Oh no, Leah, get through the light, quick! I can't move. How did they find me? Here of all places. I don't know. Just try and hold on. You were supposed to help us. I'm trying. Please, I just need time. <laughs> no. Not again. Not again. Hey, you okay? No. No, I'm not okay. We were too late. Too late? She was taken, just like George was. All she went through, she did it for nothing. I refuse to believe that. I just can't. Did she say anything, anything at all that could help us? There wasn't time. And there was something else. Something else? How did you get in here? What the? Leah? Oh, God. Um, look, I can explain. This doesn't look good. Turn around. Hands behind your head. No, wait, listen. I don't have time for this. I said... Turn around. Hands behind your head. On the floor. Please, just... Now! Sorry for the wait, ladies. My assistant seems to be... out. What can I do for you? Are you the owner of this establishment? My name's on the sign. Ah, so you are Malone. That's me. And you are? My name is Madeline. And your friend? <clears throat> Jocelyn Contis. Pleasure to meet you both. We're back here. God, what the hell is going on? So much for finding answers, I just found more questions, pretty much. And now I'm going to jail. They, whoever they are, found her at, at the, the light. I mean, it's like right before the end, off to whatever it is they go off to in the light. How could anything bad happen there? The Grace Group. She didn't remember what they talked about. Why didn't she remember? It's very, very strange. But apparently that's how George got his, his meaning in life. Same with her. She said she just knew she had to join the police academy after that. And George was apparently a, a loser before. But then he became... It seems to be rich, pretty much. It's Grace Group. Sounds too good to be true. Malone. Hi there. What can I do you for? You mentioned an assistant. Where is he? Danny? I have no idea where he is. So we're a bit short-staffed, but nothing I can't handle. We'll handle that costume of yours with extra care. Costume? 
That gown of yours looks very authentic. I don't even think you can get that fabric these days. <sighs> <laughs> Have I become antiquated so soon? No offense, Med. I, I quite like it. The tiara is a nice touch. Brings out your eyes. Well, I always thought so. But you are mistaken. We are not leaving my costume here with you. We have other business. I just realized. I'm trying to help Joey pass on. <laughs> I didn't realize that until just now. I'm trying to help him pass on. He doesn't know he's dead. But he doesn't pass on, right? Because otherwise, how would he still be here with Rosa? Hmm. What happened to you? What do you mean? This shop. It is... Shall we say? It looks shot up. Shot up? Look, I know the cleaning lady hasn't been in this week, but it ain't that bad. Now, can I help you or what? You should take a closer look at the walls and windows. They are definitely not what they should be. You sure talk funny, lady. There isn't anything wrong with the windows that I can see. Malone, I regret that it falls to me to tell you that you are dead. What? Get out of town. Now, can I help you or what? Madeline, does that ever work? <sighs> nope. No, it does not. I will return presently. Take your time. I'm not going anywhere. Yes, well, we will see. It says to ring the bell if I need help. Hey. Miss Contis, what can I help you with? So, who shot up this place? Hey? Come on, this place looks like the set of a gangster flick. I don't know what you mean. Are you seriously telling me that this place looks normal? Listen, everything here is top of the line. We're even looking into that dry cleaning stuff. What cleaning? Dry cleaning. It's... Look, never mind. Can I help you with anything or what? Uh, so... Did you see who smashed up your window? What are you talking about? The window looks fine to me. Right. Of course it does. Totally agree with you. <laughs> well, see you around. Sure. Right. Let's see what's behind here. The spirit is blocking the way past. Oh, right. You're a spirit. You can see me. I can't just go past you. Hmm. Malone. Hi there, what can I do you for? Well, telling him he's dead again is not going to work. Malone, I must insist. You are in fact dead. Look, you feeling all right? I am perfectly well. Nah, you're under pressure, I can tell. I got a bottle of whiskey in the back, if you need a belt. I do not need a belt, thank you. I will return presently. Take your time. I'm not going anywhere. Let's see if I can annoy him into accepting that he's dead. Nope. I ain't putting my fingers in the... Jeez. What happened here? Okay, well I don't have anything on me with either character. I've exhausted all my topics. I don't have any sort of a note-taking clue system. Better not. If anybody comes in here, I don't want that thing in my hands. I ain't lugging that home. Better not. Madeline would never let me hear the end of it. So... Better not. And I have to stay here. You crazy? I ain't even if I did put it there. Doesn't leave me much to do. I could just walk through that ghost, but ugh, guy gives me the creeps. Looks like it leads to a back room. Hey. Miss Conte. Well. Sure. My host? Yeah. Appeal for maturity. Are you ready to take this seriously, my host? You don't think I'm serious? I think your head is in the clouds. Shows what you know. I think you've been dead too long. Dead too long? Whatever do you mean? I just want to live, you know? Is that so wrong? You appear living to me. 
I'm living for the dead. It's different. How so? It just is. About that window. What? We needed to get in, didn't we? Well, we're in. I suppose I cannot argue with the results. Darn Sutton. I know this transition has not been easy. Yeah, well, I always thought my uncle was cuckoo. At least now I know why. We made fun of him, you know? I am aware. It pained him greatly. Yeah, I guess now everyone's gonna make fun of me. So I got that to look forward to. Any thoughts on this last song? Seems nice enough. Any useful thoughts? No. Let's just get this done. Right. Any thoughts? Seems nice. Any? No. I believe. Yeah. Malone. Hi there. What can I do? I have no dialogue options. Take your time. Uh, what am I missing? I'm in a single room and I can't leave and I have no inventory. So. This should be pretty easy. The notice reads, please. I am incorporeal and unable to ring the bell. Indeed, indeed. The spirit is a door leading. Like most lost spirits, he seems unaware of his circumstances. I believe these were caused by a pistol. It has been a long time since I have seen my reflection. Hmm. So garish. Fabulous Marconis. Some clothing items. She doesn't even have the power to blow on stuff like Joey does. I suppose in lieu of a key, this had to suffice. We have a duty to perform first. Malone. Hi there. I will take your time. Okay, what in the heck am I missing? Hey. Miss. Well. Sure. I, I have no inventory. I have no dialogue options. What? What? What am I missing? How can I be missing something? It seems impossible. What do I need that thing for? I. I can't go in the back room. I can't go out. I ain't. Well, I can't pick I any of this up. Huh, some kind of band. Danny and Linda Marconi? Never heard of them. I think maybe I could mention that. We'll see if that allows me to mention it. Hey. Miss Cut? There we go. You in some music? I saw that poster on the wall. Oh, that's Danny's thing. Danny. The guy who runs this place with me, him and his girl, Linda. They're in a band. If you can call it that. They play weekends, sometimes. He wants to make it big, but, uh... But what? But nothing. Danny just needs to focus on earning an honest living, that's all. Do Danny and Linda have regular gigs? I don't know. Why? I might want to hear him play. Save your eardrums, lady. That's my advice. Well, see you around. Sure. Malone. Hi there. I could not help but overhear your conversation with my colleague. This Danny Marconi. He is important to you, is he not? What makes you think that? Your energy, your aura, if you will. It changes when you speak of him. So tell us, what is Danny to you? I have no idea what you're talking about. Malone, you know precisely what I am talking about. And you will tell us. I... You want to do this. <laughs> that sounds kind of creepy. You don't think we will understand. Rest assured, we will. The only thing I understand is that I want you both gone. Well, that didn't work. I could leave, as you request. But I don't believe you want me to. Not really. Well, do you? I... Who the hell are you people? We are here to help. Nothing more. You are so close now. So close. Why is everything so confusing? It does not have to be. Life used to be so simple. Then Danny had to go follow a pipe dream. He had to make deals with club promoters. Club promoters he couldn't pay. So they showed up here, 
I told Danny to stay away while I tried to talk some sense into them. And did you? He got away. That's what's important. At least, I think it is. I'm not so sure anymore. I understand you now. You are adrift. You are scared. But there is nothing to be scared of. Come here. My host? Yeah, sorry. I don't know why I did it. Danny isn't much, really, but he's a good guy. You think it was worth it? I don't know. Sorry. You don't have anything to say? Anything at all? No. Not really. Right. So I just head that way. Yeah. Well, tell your friend thanks. And if you ever see Danny... <laughs> Forget it. I suppose it doesn't matter. My host. My host, are you alright? I knew you'd follow me in here. You can never give me a minute's peace. You should not stay here too long. Or what? I'll die. I get it now. We all thought my uncle was nuts, but he was just... numb. He just stopped caring. About anything. Who could blame him? Trust me, my host. It is best to push those feelings aside. Why? It is what must be done. That is all. What does it matter? Listen to me. In time, you will feel differently. Differently? Yes. This will all feel... normal. Normal? I don't want this to be normal! Many of your predecessors felt the same. In time, things changed. I'm going dancing, Madeline. Don't wait up. I see. I suppose after all this time it was inevitable that one of you deciphered the method. But do you think it will be that simple? It will not work. Do you hear me? It will destroy you! My host, Jocelyn Contest! Hear me! Contest! At 2.23 a.m., Detective Corey Palmer conducting interview with Rosangela Blackwell. Detective Sam Durkin also present. So, Miss Blackwell, tell us again why you were in that house. Say nothing. Tell them nothing. Keep your teeth together. We'll get out of this. Huh, yeah, trying to talk my way out of this. <laughs> How could I possibly explain this without, seem without seeming just absolutely crazy? I'm gonna go with what Joey said. I'm gonna say nothing. Answer the question, Blackwell. <sighs> Let the record show that the interviewee has chosen to remain silent. That's your right, but your silence can and will be used against you. Remember that. Fine. Next question. What happened to Detective Piero? I'm just gonna keep saying nothing. Miss Blackwell, I won't ask again. What happened to Detective Piero? Enough, Palma. You saw the paraffin test. Leah fired that weapon. I refuse to believe that, Sam. Believe what you want. Those are the facts. Well, here's some facts for you. This lady was chatting with Emil Haskins earlier this evening. Not only that, we have a witness who saw her sneaking into his office at work. How do you respond to that? No answer, huh? Well, let me lay it out for you. We spoke to the clerk on duty. We spoke to Emil Haskins, a man who is now a widower, I might add. Nobody gave you permission. But then, breaking and entering isn't really a new thing for you, is it? I've pulled your file. Do you even know how many restraining orders you have against you? Let the record show that the interviewee has chosen to remain silent. Again. If getting banned from the campuses of NYU and Columbia weren't bad enough, we've got a dozen complaints registered against you from businesses and families. I'd call Bellevue to have you taken away. But you're banned from there, too. 
Who the hell are you? And why haven't you been taken in before now? Palmer, take a walk. Sam? You're tired. Go get a cup of coffee. I don't need coffee. Don't think I don't know what's going on here. I've heard the rumors. That you've got some mysterious informant. Is this her? Palmer? Fine. I'm going. But we will find out what happened. It's our damn job, after all. So, you happy now? <laughs> no. <sighs> I can continue to stay silent. Uh, yeah, I think I might speak up at this point. Of course not. I only wanted to- What? Help? You think you helped anyone here? There's something much bigger going on. So you said. But we cops, we like things simple. Not you, though. You make things complicated just by walking into a room. What are you trying to say? Officially, we're pursuing every lead. Unofficially, there was no trace of the bullet that killed the little girl. With Leah dead, we'll most likely never solve it. The trail is too cold. So, what do you need? Um, excuse me? You want it in so bad? You're in. You won't be on the books. We can't even pay you. This case is too high profile. So, what do you need? Uh... Okay. Let's see. I might just get all of these. I'm not sure if I have to pick one, but... Let's look it over. Leah's case files. She said it got out of control, so I would assume it's related to a case she was working on. Seems like the most plausible way she would get involved. But then again, it might be tied to the Grace Group, which happened before she even became a cop, so maybe it's not. Access to George Austin's apartment? That would be very good, too. In fact, I'm going to say that's probably the most important thing. Access to his apartment. Yeah. Access to George Austin's apartment. I'll take care of it. Anything else? A cup of coffee. Could certainly use that. Access to Leah's case files. Can't do it. Those are being boxed up and archived. Mm. Anything else? Everything you know about George Austin. Palmer can get you that. Speak to him tomorrow. Anything else? Palmer? The guy that was just in here? Do you really think he's going to want to speak to me? Alright, how about a cup of coffee? Cup of coffee? <laughs> I'll have Palmer get you one on the way out. Anything else? Nothing that I can think of. Alright. From now on, you talk to Palma. He'll be at the front desk tomorrow. Detective Durkin. Sam. Why are you doing this? Why me? My first case involved a kid. 30 years ago it must have been. There was this little girl living with her aunt. The aunt went nuts. Smashing things. Screaming. Total loony. The little girl was hiding in a closet. Couldn't have been more than five. Scared out of her mind. I've had a soft spot for kids ever since. I see. Go home, Blackwell. Get some sleep. You look like you spent the night in jail. Huh. The press are having a field day. Lots of theories, but nothing approaching the truth. You expect anything different? Just be glad your name didn't get leaked. That's the last thing we need. No trace of the Grace Group, either. Then we best get out there and do what we do. Yeah, I need to figure out what this Grace Group is. I can't go to bed yet. I have a full day ahead of me. Or rather, a full night, but still. Okay, let's get... Let's get all the information about George Austin from Palmer before I go to his place. Oh, it's you. Sam told me you'd be swinging by. Hi, Corey, was it? No, it's Officer Palmer. I'm sorry about Leah. Don't even go there. I don't care what you saw, or what the evidence says. Leah wouldn't kill herself. And if she did, then she wasn't Leah anymore. Honestly, she might not have been Leah anymore. I don't know what the hell happened to her. 
You're taking Leah's death rather personally. I, that seems like a very rude question to ask. So I'm gonna ask it to see what happens. You seem to be taking Leah's death rather personally. The chief would agree with you. That's why I'm shackled behind this desk and set out there doing something. So Durkin told me to speak to you? Yes, I heard. Congratulations, I guess. I don't know why you're so special, but orders are orders. If you need any information from us, I'll see about getting it to you. But you talk to me, and only me. Understand? Perfectly. <laughs> so we're good? No, no we're not. Not even gonna bother. So what's the story with you and Leah? I get the impression you knew her pretty well. Yeah? I guess you could say that. I partnered with her back when I first joined the force. She taught me a lot. Everything, really. I owe her. She was a rock. She was a rising star. Why would she flip out like she did? I'm working on it, Corey. I really am. That's Officer Palmer. And I'm not holding my breath. Is there anything else you can tell me about Leah? Officer Piero was juggling a demanding job, a growing daughter, and a deadbeat ex-husband. There was immense pressure on her, but I still don't buy that she would do what she did. Is Detective Durkin around? I haven't seen him since yesterday. I'm sure he's wandering around somewhere. Probably smoking in the, in the snow, as usual. So, what's the latest on George Austin? He was killed with a 22 caliber bullet. That's all we know so far. We're still talking to Leah's ex-husband, but he's got a pretty solid alibi. How did Kendra die? Was that ever established? I read the autopsy report. It was definitely a bullet wound. It went right through her shoulder. Clean hole all the way through. The coroner said that she bled to death, but could have survived if she was brought to a hospital right away. I don't understand this. Not at all. So somebody shot a little, a little girl in the shoulder and then just left her to bleed to death? What the fuck? Did you know Emil Haskins at all? I don't know much. Just what Leah used to tell me. I got the impression he was a deadbeat. Always out of a job, always late with child support payments, things like that. Guess he doesn't have to worry about that stuff anymore. Just in case this leads somewhere, I guess I have to ask it, but I know we're definitely not good. So are we good? Good? You don't think I still killed anyone, do you? I don't know what to believe. But Durkin vouches for you, and he now owes me a favor, a big one. So, I guess I come out ahead. George and Leah both were members of a self-help group. They called it the Grace Group. Oh yeah, Leah told me about that place. She did? Yeah, she didn't go into detail, but I know it meant a lot to her. She used to tell me that nobody could ever fall so far that they couldn't still reach for a helping hand. I'm not sure what that meant, but she used to say it all the time. Hmm. You don't think it's relevant that both Leah and George went to the same self-help group? That group met over 20 years ago. But even still, the two of them were a couple. They did lots of things together. Went to the same restaurants, went to the same shows, slept in the same bed. So they went to the same church. It means nothing. You don't think it's relevant? That group, I think... Well, I'd better go. Thanks for the help. Sure. Let's go check out George Austin's apartment. Hi. Yes, miss? My name is Rose Angela Blackwell. I was told you'd be expecting me. Is this about George? That's right. I still can't believe it. But here's the key. 12th floor, penthouse A. Thanks. Did George ever mention the Grace Group? Grace Group? Does it have to do with Grace Church? It might. Hmm. I know he often went to Grace Church services, but he never mentioned any Grace group. Sorry. How do I even start to pronounce that? Ch Ch Chachkis? 
Is it tchotchkes? What's a tchotchke? I think they might be candlesticks. Possibly. I don't even know what they are. It's a tablet computer. Looks like it's still in the charging dock. One missed call? Ooh, Michael. Probably don't need to write the number down, I hope. Whoever this Michael is, he seems to know quite a lot. Michael. Hi, George. It's been a long time. Almost too much time. I know we generally don't like to revisit our past, but this time, we must. I think we're all in danger. It's almost too fantastic to believe. Something has happened to me. Something that has shown me something terrible. Do you still have my number? Call me, ASAP. Yes, I'm being sincere. He did not just die. He no longer exists in any form. His soul is gone. Ripped apart. I saw it happen. I won't soon forget it. It will happen to me. To all of us. Do you remember P? He died not too long ago. It might have already happened to him. Do you know where the others are now? We have to warn them. So this Michael has a source who knows about bestowers. About me. This is starting to get personal. You and Leah? That's wonderful news. I wish I could have heard under better circumstances. Someone is after us. It's not enough. They want to take our souls when we die. But they want to speed up the process. I don't think those deaths were accidents. My source tells me about someone who can help us. She's called the Bestower. We're going to look for her. It's not enough they want to take our souls, our souls when we die, but they want to speed up the process. So they want, they want these people's souls, but yeah. They apparently need them or want them quickly enough to want to murder them. Why? What are, what are they doing with these souls? Are they capturing them or are they just killing them? Maybe he can find this bestower person and maybe he can't. Either way, I know what I have to do. What was the number of that contractor again? Where are they? What have you done? I'm not a violent man, but if you've done anything to hurt them, I will kill you. I guess I saw the other end of that email from... Uh, Emil's... work computer? Yeah. So can I call him? Yeah. <laughs> Michael with a question mark. Let's save that for later. Let's take a look around first. It looks like a regular lamp. Looks like a balcony out there. A little table and a chair. It'd be a nice place to sit with a glass of wine at sunset, if there wasn't three feet of snow out here. Yeah, fair enough. The view uptown. It's beautiful. It's also strangely green. It might be pretty in the spring, but for now all the plants are dead. That'd look amazing on my bathroom wall. Darling, that thing's bigger than your entire bathroom. <laughs> Is that a genuine meme? It must have cost George a fortune. A pedal-operated garbage can. Bok choy, garam masala, quinoa, branzino. It's either a shopping list or a voodoo spell. I'm pretty sure that's a shopping list. Bok choy, garam masala, quinoa, branzino. It's either a sh Those are kind of... rather exotically named foods, but they are actual foods. A saucepan and some cooking implements. They don't look like they've ever been used. Wait, if they've never been used... Then why would he want stuff like... garam masala? Isn't that just a spice? Obviously it'd be used in cooking. I think it's a spice mixture, isn't it? Often used in Indian cooking. Pretty sure. It's empty. Thank God. <laughs> Almost feel bad for adventure game characters, because everybody tries to make them search around in in the trash, the trash bins and trash bags and whatnot. This is private Whoa. property, you know. What the? Hmm. Oh, um, hi there. Yes, um, 
Hi there. What are you doing up here? My first thought was, is that Jocelyn? I'm pretty sure that's the same voice actor that did Jocelyn. I don't know if it's actually Jocelyn, though. It could be. I'm a friend of George Austin. Hmm, a friend, of course. I suppose he was bound to get to a redhead sooner or later. Oh, no, it's nothing like that. Please, it's none of my business. Anyway, I'd best head back in. But I'm sure I'll see you around. Ta. Roof Ghost. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Jocelyn. Huh. Locked. Hmm. Joey, could you come out here? Uh-huh. Whatever this note says, it's too dark to read it. Hmm. Whatever this note... Looks like it starts with I. I something something something. She seems pretty easy going, but it's hard to say if it's genuine. It feels polished. Practiced. Well, if it is Jocelyn, then Joey should certainly recognize her, right? Hi there. I'm sorry, have we met? Kind of. I think you met my friend earlier. I see. You're both looking after George's place. Yeah, something like that. So you actually live here? Uh, so to speak. Yes. Why are you so surprised? Well, this place is kind of... well, empty. I live alone. That's not what I mean. Look around. There's nothing in here. What on earth are you talking about? <sighs> Never mind. So... About this place. I might not have the highbrow taste that George has, but my furniture is just as serviceable as his. And twice as comfortable, I might add. <clears throat> Who are you, if you don't mind me asking? Cute. Very cute. Huh? Wait, you're serious? Well, isn't this delicious? It's so rare that I get to be the mysterious one. My name's Joey. Joey Malone? Why don't you tell me yours? You honestly don't know who I am. I'm afraid not. I admit, I'm fascinated. I know your name, but you don't know mine. It's not often that I'm in this position. So, are you gonna tell me or what? I think... not. I want to savor this for just a little while longer. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Jocelyn. Could I ask you a couple questions? You don't even know my name, and you want to ask me questions. Well, maybe if you actually told me your name. <laughs> no. Like I said, this is way too much fun. So what is this? You famous or something? Or something. Come on, you know my name. It's only fair. I can't tell if you're being genuine or if you're just playing with me. Why not both? Well, the night is young. See if you can figure it out. Listen, it's really important that you tell me who you are. What on earth could be so important? It's... complicated. No. No, I don't think so. I'm enjoying this way too much. I can just keep hounding her. Come on, what's your name? No. This is too much fun. You'll figure it out. Everyone recognizes me eventually. Well, whoever you are, I'll see you around. Say hi to George for me, if you see him. Right. So it's too dark in here to read that. So how would I get more light in here? Looks like there's a light switch here, but I can't even mess with it. And even if I could, I couldn't do it with Joey. This door's locked. No point in leaving that way. I can only leave with Red and she can't get in here. So, hmm, I think I'll call Michael. Oh wait, I have a new email. I've got a bunch of new emails. Abbott Leaks, 
exclusive. Did Frank Lyons really die, or was it just a cheap stunt? It is no secret that his well-publicized death catapulted his last film to the biggest box office earning spot that weekend. So what really happened? Abbott Leakes intends to find out. Sam Durkin. So we looked into the Meehan girl. The picture matches the Jane Doe. We're trying to locate her friends and family. When you get to it, please submit a report so we can invoice you. Here's a copy of the case notes for your reference. Excellent. Oh, it's updated Karth file. So Sam says I'm supposed to help you. I'm here at the station, so come by whenever. We also told the staff at George Austin's building to expect you. If there's a logic behind any of this, I don't see it. Let's see. Well, these are obviously the same person. I suppose I could try to connect them. This is the phone number that Michael called George from. Hmm. I can't see any connection. Neither do I. All right, let's have a chat with Michael. No answer. Hmm. Disappointing. Can I do a reverse phone lookup to find his address? Assuming that's actually a landline, if it's a cell phone, obviously that would not work. Hmm. Yeah, he seems to, she seems to live, or rather lived, in the apartment next door. Maybe I can go down and ask the guy about it. The doorman. Or the deskman. I guess he's not actually at the door, is he? Yeah, what if I search for his number? I don't think that'll work. But just in case... Three, four, one, two. Don't know if I need the dashes. Yep, it didn't work. Okay. Yeah, let's go speak with the guy down there. I mean, she's in a different apartment, so she pres he presumably would know her. Oh, I, wait, I can go directly outside? Oh, whoops. That's what that meant. That's neat, I'm getting these uh, little quick things here. Fast travel. It's just like Skyrim, except completely different. Hi. Yes, miss? Did George know anyone named Michael? I'm afraid I don't know. Does this phone number look familiar to you? Hmm, no it doesn't. Sorry. Do you know who lived in the apartment across from George? I'm afraid not. I only started working here a few months ago. That apartment has been vacant the whole time. Damn it. There are tons of case files listed here. I'm not going to ask about them one by one. Okay. In that case, I'm not quite sure. But I am going to end this episode here. Alright. The mystery deepens. The closer I get to answers, the more questions I get. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I will be back soon.